Okay, so I'm a big fan of knowledge management, and especially in the contact center, really important. However, regular search doesn't work because what customers want and probably what employees want is very similar, one right answer. So now we have natural language processing, we have you know case-based reasoning, we have all these kind of cool tools. Not everybody quite gets it yet. I'm wondering if something like that needs to sit on top of all this, the fire hose. What do you guys think? This is, this is very hard stuff. Coming up with the right kind of filter, especially in, in terms of chatter, what Salesforce is doing, where they're enabling their database objects to provide updates into the feed, into the stream. So I think that this is, this is non-trivial, and I think it's meaningful that Salesforce has not spoken about this today. Now, they, they just announced it, it's just a few hours ago. Uh, you know, old out to the out to the public, but I think this is a big issue. It's a big question. Well, I, I think first of all, we have to look at the, what the real problem is. First of all, most of the of the, of the knowledge that we have in organizations is submerged in, in one or two places: in proprietary uh, databases and silos. You know, we, we've tried to surface that, but most enterprise knowledge is trapped there, or in the the, the heads of our workers. So, right. Uh, you, know, you can have the greatest algorithms in the world and do natural language processing and. You know, neural network uh, you know, uh, based analysis systems and you're still not going to be able to get the answer if you can't reach the data. So the first thing we got to do is get more information out of, of the heads of the workers and be able to reach deeper into our existing IT systems. Then those things have a chance. Uh, what's also interesting is on the web we don't really have as much of this problem. Uh, you know, it might take us a couple of attempts uh, in our favorite search engine but we can generally find almost anything that's out there. And it's enormous. It's way bigger than our enterprises. Yet it works. So one of the things we see with enterprise 2.0 tools, and this is you know part of our checklist. Uh, you know, I I, I coined this mnemonic called flatnesses, and one of them is is that the web architecture, you know, the, the, the design of the World Wide Web makes it easy to find things because of link structure and other things that allow simple analysis to be able to find what you're looking for. We lack that. We have you know a few well defined uh, well defined points of integration in our enterprises, um, but it. That is diametrically opposed to the structure that you need to find things. So uh, we find, again, when you start using these web tools and you create these thousands or millions of deep interconnections between your data, all of a sudden relevancy happens so those things can actually work. Well, so, what do you think? People are saying that Google is now your new home page for customer service because people will go to Google and you know say, handset noisy and put in the brand name, and then hopefully your community comes up first. I mean, are we looking at something similar where we need a, a rele relevancy ranking system like Google? Well, and you have the whole reputation system too. I mean, the, the question I get a lot about Enterprise 2.0 is you have this, all, this stream now of knowledge and, and people you know, communicating what they're doing, but how do you know it's right? Well, you got to vote or rank. Yeah. And, and you can't game the system. Right, and voting is a problem. Um, uh, and, and so we were talking about, you know, how do you overlay reputation systems? You know, like says who is, is you know, a portable reputation system that you can, you know, that you can take and apply across multiple sites. Uh, so we're seeing some of those things emerge. And, and we know we work, we do work in the public sector. We see this is probably you know problem number one is mm -hmm. how do they figure out? You know, they love this stream of information, but they need to know how authoritative it is. So. Uh, we're still trying to figure that out. There are some early solutions for that, but that's also part of the equation, I think. I know I've been working a lot with Lithium, and Lyle, who was the CEO there, did a very good job of figuring out how to take his gaming background and figure out, one, how do you create super users who are the people who, like, so the law is 1% post, those are usually your super users, 9% respond, 90% read. So one, you got to get the super users to participate. That's, that's part of the game. And then two, you need to be able to rank things without people gaming the system. And Lithium, because Lyle had that gaming background, was able to do that. What do you guys think? Is that possible in Enterprise 2.0? It's not only possible, but it is necessary. You, you've got to find a way to, it's part of this fire hose problem, right? You've got to find a way of sifting through the massive information and determining what's important to you. But again, this is a very, very hard problem to solve. Google has been at this for quite a number of years now, and they've had essentially unlimited resources to throw at it. Salesforce, from a company size standpoint, is obviously at a very different scale than Lithium. So it's going to be interesting to see 
how they throw resources at the problem and the extent of resources and what they're able to come up with. But this is obviously a very, very fertile and a, and a very important area. So and I, I, I wonder. Just, uh, I would just also offer up that the, the, that number applies to the external world of collaboration with the marketplace. Internally, you have very different numbers because, I mean, you know, look at email, for example. Do you think there's a 110, you know, 100 uh, percent? Uh, no. You know, a, a breakdown there. No, it's probably quite different uh, because these are the tools in which we get things done. We use them every day, all day long. So right. I, I think, uh, and this is what we're seeing, in fact, is that there is a different breakdown. People tend to produce a little bit more. I do think like the new models of you know things like microblogging makes it so that everyone can participate. You don't have to have great writing skills to use things like Twitter. You just can get the information out there. Right, that makes a whole lot of sense. I'm wondering um, about the change management aspect of all of this because having been a systems integrator, I used to go in and I would do you know whatever newfangled thing came out as is could be roadmap or gap roadmap, and then I would sit on a in a company's site for two years and watch the internal conversation, which generally wasn't very positive, not invented here. And one of the things that I'm, I'm seeing actually in the customer service world is that marketing and customer service are starting to merge. In fact, that's actually happening in Intuit. So I think sometimes when we approach these problems, we're approaching it from the old mindset of this department does this and employees do that. And so if you try to overlay social on top of the old system, it's fraught with issues. But if we really looked at how are we transforming departments, their functions, their roles, the collaboration between departments, I think we're looking at a different thing. Now the question is, the technology is really cool and it makes sense. Are companies ready to do the change management piece that's going to be required to make the technology flourish? Well, clearly you're, what, the problem you're describing is organizations have developed with various departmental uh, information silos. And the whole concept of social computing is to bridge these silos. And yet the problem is, is that the, very often the people inside each of these departments have their own uh, local, even parochial definition of success. And they have their own local uh, KPIs, key performance indicators against which they're judged. And oftentimes they're in conflict well, they're with in another department. They're or not in conflict, but not supportive. Well, they, in fact, they can be in conflict, and I think ultimately one of the, the keys to successful change management is to somehow get these folks to recognize that even though we have our own definitions of success, ultimately we all need this particular project to be completed in order for all of our definitions of, of criteria for success to be met. To keep our jobs. Exactly. Or to get our bonus or whatever it might be, yes. Yeah, and so, you know, there's, a, I think, a reluctance, particularly in high-performance organizations that, that think they've already, already have a lot of success, that, you know, why do we need to really fundamentally change? And a little wary of that, saying, well, if we were already doing quite well, um, you know, if, if we need to change so much to, to access the value of these tools, is it really going to be worth it for us? Is there a lot of risk involved in that? And I think that's part of the challenge. Uh, you know, that's part of the mindset. Plus, there's a lot of... Uh, there is a lot of resistance to change in general. Uh, people who have a vested interest in the way things are, who are benefiting from, from the current structure of the organization, the current way business is done, uh, are also going to be reluctant. This is particularly people who have information power, uh, or at the top of the hierarchies, who might feel a little bit threatened about these things. Uh, but we see, uh, you know, some of the evidence beginning to emerge. And Andrew McAfee talked about this. You adopt social computing today, and you're not going to dethrone, you know, the market leader overnight. But over time, the value, it does seem to be there uh, uh, that you will have long-term competitive advantage over those who are not doing this. Can I, can I just make a comment here? Sure, Mike. On this, on this point that there, there is so much resistance to this type of change in various quarters. And, and it scares people, and it scares people for good reason. But the bottom line is, if you've got IT, and you have business, and then you have, say, the, the finance department, there is a natural advantage to have these people talking with each other. And I think that in the end, the truth does will out. And so the force of change will happen, but it has to be nurtured, has to be done in, in a constructive manner, and it needs to take its time. 